Okay, this is my second, actually my third attempt at doing this video. <clears throat> so hopefully my dogs will not be barking, my cat will not walk in front of my computer and knock everything over. And hopefully, um, I will, well, there goes my cat already, <laughs> hopefully I will have a good connection. Okay, this is, this is Suki. Say hello Suki. Sookie's a pest. Uh, so hopefully you can hear me too. And I'm going to share with you today a revelation about uh, a scripture that people bring up when they say that we can't command our angels. They say, Jesus didn't do it, you can't do it. Well, I'm going to prove why we can use that scripture. So I am looking over here on mm -hmm. my, oh there we go, on my Facebook let me turn off my sound so I don't have an echo. Oh, no. Uh, echo. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to get started. And hopefully I won't be distracted looking at my video over here. And hopefully it won't be locking up and freezing on us like it was earlier. I have lots of signals. Uh, so it should, be, it should be good. Okay. So the scripture that most people use when they want to argue with you, oh, you can't command angels, is Matthew 26, 53. And this is what it says. Or do you think that I cannot now that or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father and he will provide me with more than twelve legions of angels? So they said um, that uh, Jesus could pray to his father and get twelve legions of angels. Okay. So my point that I'm gonna go over is the next scripture. The next scripture says, Then how could this scripture be fulfilled that it must happen thus. In other words, Jesus is saying, if I pray to my father and ask him to send angels to get me out of the situation of being uh, captured, then the scripture won't be fulfilled that I suffered and died on the cross for your sins. Because if he, if he gets angels, then uh, he's not going to fulfill prophecy. He's not going to die. He's not going to be captured. So, my first point is that Jesus said that if he, he prayed to his father, he would get angels. Well, Jesus couldn't command the angels to come because, and this is so important, because the angels hearken to the voice of the word. And the word has been prophesied for thousands of years that one would be coming who would um, be the sacrificial lamb and so on and all the prophecies about Jesus. So the angels couldn't just, Jesus didn't say, I can command the angels to come and they will uh, rescue me from the situation because the angels hearken to the voice of the word and the voice prophesied and had to be prophesied in the earth in order for Jesus to be captured and for everything to be fulfilled. So he had to pray to his father. He said he could pray to his father and get angels because he couldn't command them because they couldn't respond because they had to hearken to the voice of the word. And he says, how then would the scriptures be fulfilled? If I prayed to my father and got the angels, then I wouldn't be fulfilling my father's will. Uh, I have to pray to him, ask him angels and tell him, hey, I'm not going to fulfill your will. Uh, get the angels to get me out of here. Okay, so so my point being, uh, if, if you don't understand that, you know, ask me a comment. So let me go on. In that hour, Jesus said to his multitudes, have you come out against me? Uh, as a robber with swords and clubs to take me and I teach daily in the temple and you didn't seize me. He says, but all this was done that the scriptures of the prophet might fulfill, be fulfilled. So in other words, Jesus is saying right here that he could command his angels to come, but he, but they wouldn't come because they hearken to the voice of the word and the prophecy was it had to be fulfilled. And it says right here in the scripture and Again, he says twice that it had to be fulfilled. They had to capture him. So he couldn't speak to the angels and say, come, because the angels hearken to the voice of the word. So he said, if I pray to my father and tell him to send the angels, uh, then it still wouldn't be f pro pro fulfilled. So what basically what I'm saying is that scripture is used to say that he prayed to his father. The reason he prayed to his father, he, he could have prayed to his father to get the angels is because he couldn't command the angels because the scripture wouldn't be fulfilled. So I don't know if you understand that, but that was pretty cool uh, that God showed me that revelation. Uh, and then those who laid hold of Jesus led him away and fulfilling the scripture. And if he had called the angels uh, 
who hearkened to the voice of the word, they wouldn't have hearkened because he didn't speak uh, what the prophecy said that he would be captured. And so they couldn't, they couldn't, he couldn't command them. He had to go through his father. And if he went and he prayed to the, if he prayed to the father, then the angels uh, would, it, it wouldn't still wouldn't be fulfilled. So he, he couldn't do that. Okay. Um, then he, then the scripture goes on and the high priest is questioning him and says, do you have nothing to say? And Jesus kept silent. Then the high priest said, I put you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the son of God. And he says, it's as you have said. Then he said, nevertheless, I say to you here after you will see the son of man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. So because he didn't speak to the angels and tell them to come because they couldn't fulfill the voice of the word because it was prophetic that he would die. And because he didn't, he had to then the second choice was pray to the father to send the angels. And he chose not to do that because if he did that, then the prophecy wouldn't be fulfilled again. So that's why he didn't, he didn't pray. Now uh, you can yourself uh, pray, not pray. You can yourself command angels. And the, this is why. And these scriptures, uh, all these three pages, uh, will be notes that you can download and study yourself. Because, you know, don't take my word for it. This is an interactive relationship with Jesus. And you have to um, experience it yourself. I'm just like a springboard. Uh, like I listen to people say stuff. And, and then me and the Holy Spirit go off on a rabbit trail. And Jesus starts teaching me. And Holy Spirit starts teaching me about totally different things than what the person is teaching so you know you feel free to put your scriptures down if you disagree with me but this is what the holy spirit showed me and this is my relationship with the holy spirit he said first of all uh I, let me tell you something about going to heaven also which is our something we can do i, I had the most awesome and first time experience the other day yesterday when i went for a walk i was going for a walk and lately I've been practicing uh, ascending and, and going to heaven. And um, God told me to visual, to look at pictures of what I imagined a garden, what my perfect garden would look like. And he says, okay, memorize that. And now when you lay down and close your eyes, see that picture in your head and see me coming to you and us interacting together and having a relationship. And so I've been practicing that and doing that and having fun doing it. And kind of been slow in some of the growing area. But I was walking, I was so, it was so cool, I was walking on my prayer walk that God told me to do every morning, and all of a sudden, oh, it was so cool, God was standing aside of me, and he said to me, and you know how he says, in a fraction of a second, he says something, he said to me, let's see if I can get the words right, he, he said, just don't you realize that just as easy it is as it is for me to stand here and go for a walk with you, it is just as easy for you to come and go for a walk with me in heaven. And I just, I was like, I was like, <gasps> you know, like, you know, I, I, I was so excited and so overwhelmed by his presence. And so, I mean, I could cry right now. <laughs> I don't want to cry. <laughs> Um, so overwhelmed by his presence that that was the first time I actually was walking with God, Father or Jesus, whoever, right next to me for a fraction of a second. I felt his presence. I felt him and him saying, you know, don't you think that it's just as easy for you to walk in heaven like it is for me to walk with you? I thought, wow, that is just so cool. So I wanted to share that experience with you. That was the first time I ever experienced that. And it was so cool. So these are the scriptures he gave me because uh, sometimes people are kind of like on the border, like, okay, we can command angels. We can talk to angels, whatever. But no, we can't. Yes, we can. And this is something that I do. I don't always say I command you angels. I'm going to show you what I do. And I'm going to talk about the courts of heaven too. Okay, this is the things that God told me about this, this sharing with you. He said, first of all, we are, you are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus in Ephesians 1.20. And he said, that was my, um, my little speaker going off here. I forgot to shut off. Um, and he said, do you think that just the rear end 
he's finding is seated in heaven and the rest of the body is on earth. He says, no, we are one. He says, you are seated in heaven in Christ Jesus. If you are seated in heaven, you can go to heaven anytime you want to know about that being seated. You are ready in heaven. You're seated in heaven. You have that authority, that right Jesus won for you. So you are seated in heaven. That butt does not sit in heaven and the rest of the body is down here on earth. We're all one body. Okay. And then he said, the minute, okay, let's see. Um, then he said, he put all things under his feet and gave the body and gave him to be the head, the head over all things to the church, his body. We are the physical body, the physical flesh of Jesus on the earth today. He lives inside of us, okay? His power is inside of us. His presence, his kingdom is inside of us. And he said, the head is not up in heaven and the body down here. He says, you are seated. The head is not seated. The body is seated, okay? I think that's really cool. Then he said, the ministering spirits are sent to minister to us. They're in our employment. They're part of our ministry. And if you look up in the Strong's Concordance what ministering means, it means to serve, to minister to, example, it says, of those who execute the commands of others, of those who, by the command of God, proclaim and promote religion among men. In other words, if you are speaking what God speaks, you command the angels. And again, at the end of this, I'm going to demonstrate and show you how to do that. So, he says, the angels hearken to the voice of the word, Psalms 103, 19. And he said, we're the physical body. We give voice to the word by speaking it, just like the prophets prophesied all the way through uh, that Jesus was coming. And they gave voice to the word. So, we give voice to the word, and the angels hearken to that voice that we speak when we speak the word. Now, listen here. When we speak things that aren't lovely, pure, praiseworthy, honorable, just, and true, and a good report, we are coming into agreement with the enemy. And when we come in agreement to the enemy, we allow him to do what we say. So if you say to your kids, you're nothing, you're nobody, you're, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're going to grow up to be just like your father. Or when you kick your car tire and you say, you're stupid, guess what? You're partnering with the enemy. They hearken to the voice of your word. Okay, the angels hearken to the voice of the word of God that you speak while the demons are always there and they hearken to the voice that you speak that comes in agreement with them. Okay, uh, um, let's see. In his, uh, and then the scripture goes on to say that they hearken to the voice of his word and, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Well, the kingdom is in you. Okay, and you, the kingdom in you is not just in there to be pretty. It's in there to rule over all. Okay. And that says, in all his places of dominion. And it says that the kingdom will expand and his peace will expand. It's our job to expand that. It's our job to experience it. It's our job to let out what's in us. We are, wherever we go, wherever our feet go, which represent authority and dominion, we take that for the kingdom. We take that for God. Okay, um, the scripture also says that we are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. We are members of his body. And if you look up some of those key words, it says a strong limb. So, you know, your arm's not here and your butt in heaven or your head in heaven and your body down here. We're all one. We are flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. We are the temple that carries the presence. That's Ephesians 5.30. And then uh, in Romans 12.5, it says... So we being many are one body in Christ. Okay. We are one in Christ. And then the scripture that says, uh, I let in uh, scripture that says we are made lower than the angels. Uh, I don't have where it is here. It's in Hebrews, but it's also in Psalms. And I like the one in Psalms because it says we are made a little lower than God. Elohim. It's not angels. When they interpreted it into the New Testament Greek language, they said a man is made a little lower than the angels. But Jesus was not made lower than the angels when he came as a man. He was made lower than God. Um, so it, in Psalms, it says, <coughs> I believe it's Psalms, but it's Old Testament. It says that man, what is man that you are mindful of him? And you made him a little lower than the angels. It says, lower than God and in the King James Version Strong's word 
angels is God and it's H530 and it means God. Judge God, 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 um, great, mighty. Okay. So again, uh, dog go. Again, you know, you got to look up your scriptures because uh, some people get twisted with time. Okay. Um, and um, here's a scripture that's really cool. Deuteronomy 4.12. It says that he has given us the heavens and the host of heavens as our inheritage. Deuteronomy 4.19. That's a really cool scripture. And Psalms 33.6 says, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made and the host of them by the breath of his mouth. And so the hosts are ministering spirits to us. Now, um, I had a dream this morning uh, about... Uh, restoration in the area of finances for me because I've had people promise me things that involve money or things material things that they haven't followed through on and right now I've been going through a really tight time because my husband was unemployed for quite a few months and we had to get really creative and anyway so I've been really demanding the restoration and so God told me to put together this uh, um, legal document to take to the courts of heaven Okay, and the top it says heavenly partition, uh, heaven, heavenly partition, is that the right word? For restoration of all things stolen from me and my family, March 16th, 2018, as per directed in a dream. He, three things happened to me in the last couple of days and today that confirm the things that I just had in the dream and that confirmed this. So I'm going to read this to you in regards to restoration because this is how you this is one of the ways to make a uh, partition partition that just doesn't sound like I'm saying that word right. This is one of the ways to make a legal document to take to the courts of heaven that gives you what Jesus promised you and takes away the legal right of the enemy. It says in regards to restoration, Father, your word says that if a thief be caught, he has to restore sevenfold even if it costs him all the wealth of his household. Proverbs uh, 6.31 And your word says that if that the thief is called the devil and a thief, and if he be caught, he has to restore sevenfold. So, you said he is a thief and a liar, John 8. And I quote the scriptures, then I said, And you came to give me abundant life, John 10.10. 10. It says, You showed me how the enemy has stolen from me friendship, ministry, business, money, house, houses, Lands, foods, customers, sick pay jo di day, jobs, donations, cars, trucks, motorcycles, joy, destiny, seeds, harvest, peace, purpose, presence, your health, deliverance, relationship, and other monetary things. And more for me and my family. Then I say I repent. I repent for speaking words of agreement with the enemy. I ask you to forgive me. Now I'm gonna, getting ready to send the angels here too. I repent for speaking words of agreement with the enemy and ask you to forgive me and apply the blood of Jesus to those wrong words. I believe that all legal hold against this case has been resolved. And if they are, are not, I expect all legal accusations against me to be brought to my attention in a way I understand. Then I say, I forgive the people who made promises to me that they didn't keep or have stolen from me, I hold nothing against them. And I ask you to also forgive them and loosen them from these from their words. However, I hold the devil accountable for the theft and demand restoration according to the word sevenfold now today. Your word says, Father, that the angels are sent to minister to me. My weapons and my warfare are spiritual and mighty. And I always put the scripture there. Your word says that they hearken to the voice of my word. So I, as your body on earth, give voice to the word today. Host of heaven, I send you today too. And now I quote what the host of heaven do. To pull down strongholds, strategies, judgments, deceits, arguments, and reasoning of the enemy. Every barrier that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Pull down every unlawful thing. Get, go and get restoration of everything stolen from me and my family and bring it back sevenfold restoration in the name of Jesus. Okay, that's my legal document. Then I say, Father, I take this to the court today and I thank you for legal judgment against the thief 
and I ask that the host enforce this legal document of my restoration in Jesus' name. And, and so there's the document. So I have that in a PDF file that I'll upload as soon as I'm done with this uh, video. Uh, and you can up uh, download that on my uh, Angels Supernatural Courts of Heaven and other normal Christian experiences, whatever it's called. I don't know. It's real long. I'll put the link underneath here. You can download that. But if you look at that scripture, Matthew 26, 53, just to summarize that part there, that Jesus said, I could, do you not think that I could pray to my father and he could send legions of angels? How then would the scripture be fulfilled? Okay. So he couldn't pray to the father and he couldn't command angels to come because they hearken to the voice of the word and he's the word and it was prophesied that he would fulfill scripture and be captured. So in both of those ways, he could not do it because it, it would cause the scriptures not to be fulfilled. So that very scripture shows that we are to speak and command the angels. And like I said, one of the ways that I command the angels is I say, angels, you hearken to the voice of the word. The word says this, now go and do it. And I thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. And I also take communion with this in the courts of heaven and relate it. All together. So that's all I want to say, except for here comes the commercial. <coughs> I publish Christian books. Uh, my niche is the people that walk in the supernatural things of God, the courts of heaven, the supernatural wine, um, trans being transported, translated, uh, just like the Bible says. Uh, that's what we can do and what we're supposed to do. And we're coming in at time and place. And it's so important that these kind of books get out there, that we can walk in the supernatural, that we're not just good people trying to be good and obey rules it's an interactive supernatural relationship so my website is robinbremer.net for 399 dollars i publish your christian book your um no i don't do picture books at this time um your christian book uh or family safe book or a technical book um i publish it as a print book i publish it as a kindle book i open all of your accounts that you need to have open up and uh, set it all up for you. I have two packages. My budget package is only $399 and it includes doing everything that needs to be done for you to have a published book in your hand within 90 days and a Kindle, a published print book and a Kindle book in your hand within 90 days. And it's usually like a third of that time. But I, when I'm working with 10 authors at a time, sometimes I need that more time. Plus, I play ice hockey. Yes. Um, anyway, the other package is about a thousand dollars. It includes uh, five. It includes the five free Kindle KDP days that you have. I promote it, and I usually can get you up into the number one spot or at least the top one hundred, so you can legally and technically say your best-selling author your book is. Uh, it includes um, uh, promoting your book for six weeks to Facebook. And Google Groups, Facebook and Google Plus Groups, Kindle Books, websites and so on. I get it out there in front of millions of people. It includes any kind of fancy font. font and it, it, All this, even the budget one includes your book cover, professional book cover. But the $1,000 one includes promoting, not just publishing it, but promoting it and having fancy things in it and other things that um, I won't do in the budget one. Uh, like exact copy or rush order and that kind of thing so check out my website it's pretty much set up for authors for christian authors and if you know of anyone that's an author um you know share this with them and let them know all about it and um you know so on, oops no be quiet it includes any kind of fancy thought sorry and it, it, all this computer the be quiet Okay, there we go. <laughs> Shut me off. Okay, so robinbremer.net, B-R-E-M-E-R.net is my website. And I have a lot of videos on YouTube under Feed My People Joy. I think that's my Twitter account and it might be my YouTube account. But I have a YouTube account and I have like 500 teaching videos there too. So you can go there. But the videos, the latest videos um, are on my Facebook and so go to my Facebook profile and look at my videos. I have lots of teaching videos there. So have a blessed day. Excuse me. Father, in Jesus' name, just help everybody walk into your supernatural peace, presence, and power. And give them revelation, knowledge, and understanding of how to speak to the angels, how to go to the courts of heaven, and get what legally belongs to them. And I thank you, Father, for that. 
in Jesus' name, amen. And now my book, inner, uh, the DNA book about the courts of heaven and communion and, and the angels is, should be coming out soon as Billy Ray is done with his endorsement. I have Micah Trimble, uh, Micah, and uh, a whole bunch of other endorsements, but I'm just waiting for one last endorsement. And then that book will be published and available. And that is my favorite book besides the one on Walking in the Supernatural and my angel books. But check it out and I'll talk to you all later.